Hello everyone! During this online tutorial, I'm here to show you how to print the fabric and then use it to make your own lampshade. So lampshade printing is one of my favourite things to do with my printing blocks. It's such a rewarding thing to make and you can totally personalise it and print the fabric and the designs and colours that will match a certain room or just print them in the designs that you like. So I'm going to show you exactly step by step how to make your own at home. There are really easy and professional kits now that allow you to make your own lampshades at home. So normally you'd make a lampshade with a kit, you know, in a certain fabric or something, maybe to match your curtains or bedding. But we like to take this one step further and suggest that you print your own fabric to make your lampshade. So this gives you the freedom to print your fabric in your favourite designs or colours uh, that will match your house. So I'm going to be printing a lampshade in a mixture of seed head designs with a leaping hair and this is going to work perfectly in my living room. So let's talk through the equipment that you're going to need. You want a lampshade making kit, of course, and we sell a range of sizes online. I suggest that you start with either a 20 centimetre or a 30 centimetre lampshade. Now the 20 centimetres work great as a table lampshade, whereas the 30s, the, these make a good ceiling lampshade or for a floor lamp. So kind of figure out which one you'd like to try. They both use the same techniques. Obviously one's got a bit more printing involved, but they're both the same to make. And then you want your fabric. So your fabric you're going to print on two. I'll talk about the size of this later, but you just need a plain fabric that you know prints well. I use cotton or calico. Obviously, if I want white, I have a white cotton, which I use. And then I don't have a calico one here, but I'll show you it later, which is a more creamy colour. So it kind of depends on which colour fabric you want on the background. But you just need to know that it prints well. So you can also use linen and things and even an old bed sheet will work that you can just rip up. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. It just needs to print well. And then you're going to want your printing block. So like I said, I'm using a selection of seed heads with a hair. So you just want to have them ready. And then my fabric paint. Now you don't necessarily need fabric paint because your shade isn't going to go through the wash and you don't need to wash the fabric after printing or anything. You just want to use a paint that you know works well. So I love our fabric paints. I never use anything else. I just know it works so well. So I'm going to be using that. You could use a chalk paint or, you know, even an acrylic. You just want to have tried it so you know it works well. Now, the first step is we're going to want to cut our fabric down to the right size. So I've got my piece of cotton and I always cut it down to the right size before printing. Now, in your kit, this is the plastic backing that your fabric will be stuck to. So use this as a guide of how long and wide your fabric needs to be. So I've got a piece here and this is what makes up the inside of your lampshade. So this is the plastic backing. So one side is sticky that you stick your fabric to and the other side will be the inside of your lampshade. So this is how big your lampshade panel is going to be. So this is a 30 centimetre. Now what I do is lay my fabric out. I haven't ironed this or anything and use this as a guide. So you want to cut your fabric bigger than this. You want to have room at all four sides so there's excess. So I probably want, you know, two, three inches there and two, three inches at the end. It doesn't really matter how much. And then you want to have a, maybe an inch or two either end as well. So I'm going to cut my fabric there. Don't worry about any threads or anything. They shouldn't get in the way. And there you have your piece of fabric cut roughly with a little bit excess down to the size of your lampshade panel. Now our fabric is cut to the right size, I'm going to iron this as I want it to be completely crease free before I stick it to my panel. 
Now the next stage is to attach our fabric to the panel and we always attach the fabric to the panel and then print it and this is so you can work out how your design will come out on the shade and use it as a guide. It's just easier to print it once it's attached so you have that idea of how it's going to come out. Another option would be is that once you've cut your fabric to size you could then print it with your design and then attach your printed piece of fabric to the panel. This might be best if you're nervous about making a mistake but I will warn you I find it more difficult to then attach the printed fabric to my lampshade because when you're attaching your fabric it's quite hard to get it straight and this piece of printed fabric that I've done in bees, lots of the bees are going to be hanging off and there's lots of white space. So it's not really going to work out that well when I make it into my shade. Whereas if I printed my fabric that had been attached to my shade, I would have been able to see how close together I needed to do them so there wasn't so much blank space. The side that has all the lines on, this is the sticky side. So the other side is just the plain plastic and this is your sticky side. So if any of you used to like sticky back plastic, you know, books for school and things, it's a little bit similar to that. Now I have this underneath my fabric. So line it up underneath. Now make sure you've got your excess either side. Peel your fabric back and then what you want to do is you want to peel the sticky back plastic back. Now I just peel it back a little bit and make a fold so this bit here is sticky. Now you're going to lay your fabric over the top and you're just going to flatten it. Now make sure you have clean hands for this otherwise you don't want to be wiping grubby hands all over your fabric. And you're going to stick that bit of fabric down so there's no bubbles or anything in that. Now what I do is I slip my hand under the fabric and then slowly I just pull the paper back to reveal the sticky side of the panel and then I just go along with my hand and just smooth out the fabric so it attaches itself to the sticky side. So that way I'm making sure I'm not getting any bubbles on my fabric and I can really slowly control my fabric sticking so just to show you what's underneath so I'm slowly pulling this back a little bit at a time and sticking the fabric down so pull that back over so do it all the way to the end until your whole piece of fabric is stuck down on the panel Now having excess either side means that if you're not going straight, you won't run out of fabric. So I know that my, I'm going downhill slightly, but it doesn't matter because I've got plenty of excess fabric either side. Now, if you were to make a mistake, you know, say a thread went underneath or anything, you can always pull your fabric back off and then correct yourself. You know, you could pull the thread out or anything, or if you've got a bubble, pull it back and then carry on and that won't affect it very forgiving and there we have it my lampshade panel is now stuck to my fabric and it is ready for printing I've got to the point where I'm ready to start printing my fabric panel and having attached it means I can really see exactly where I want to be printing. So I can really work out how my design is going to come across once I make it into the shade. And I have a tip I want to share with you, which will help your printing at home. You'll notice on the underside of your panel, so the side where the fabric is not stuck down, that along the two long sides of the panel, there's a kiss cut section where the panel has been scored. 
So you can move it back and forth on both sides. Now, this part of the fabric that's under here is going to be the fabric that wraps around your ring. So it's going to be this part here. So if you're doing a random pattern all over like this one, I've just printed randomly and gone over the edge with my prints so that you can see some of the design when it's wrapped around the top. But if you're doing a square design, so a repeat pattern, you might want to just make sure your design fits perfectly in the space you have available. So you can see with this design, I've managed to fit my tile in the space I have and none of it has gone around the top. So the bit of fabric that is under here, I just left plain, I didn't print it. But you want to work out exactly how your design is going to fit like i said with the random pattern it doesn't matter you can just print all over and then just make it into your shade but whereas something like this or with my meadow i wanted to make sure it fitted in the space i had so what you can do is if you fold the kiss cut back and forth so your fabric creases on both sides you can then use these crease marks as a guide of where to print within. So that's really helpful when you're doing something like the tile or meadow design I just showed you, as I was able to work out how many times I could fit it in that space. So make sure you fold these little bits back and forth to have your crease lines so you can see exactly the space you have to print in. I know it's a little bit daunting printing the fabric when it's already attached to the panel as it adds a lot of pressure to make sure it's perfect. But say, for example, halfway through printing the panel, you dropped your block and it ruined the fabric. What you can do is just cut and iron another piece of fabric the right size and then you can just remove this one and replace it with the new one, just like we did originally when we added it. You just need to slowly kind of massage the fabric on, making sure there's no bubbles. And what you want to have done is practice plenty what your design is going to look like. So what I did as I cut a piece of fabric similar size to what my panel of fabric would be, and I had a play around with designs and colours. So I was going to put in, a, in the khaki, but I actually decided against it. So the colours I'm going to work with is Indian Aqua, Indigo, Ocean and Violet. And these are the four colours that I have practised and I know works well. So I'm going to start printing onto my panels. So I've got my foam mat underneath and my paints here and my cloth for wiping my blocks. So you'll see how I print over the edge. So I've folded back this little bit of extra so I can I know I'm printing in between. But with my design, I am going to print it over the edge as I don't want the design to look too rigid and stuck in the panel. I want the, you know, the animals and the seed heads to be flowing. So you'll see how that happens as I'm printing. And I will speed this part up so you're not bored. Now, one thing you do have to be careful about is because you've added the panel to your fabric, it does give you slightly more of a harder surface to print on. So make sure you're really wiggling your blocks, making sure you're getting all the edges and things. Now, with my design, I am using a hair, a leaf, a seed head, another seed head, a flower and a leaf. And I'm just going to do these randomly. I'm going to print them one at a time to build the pattern up. And I'm going to stick to mainly the same colour. So I'm just going to do the hair in violet. I'll do this seed head in blue, the flower in violet. And then I'm going to do the leaf with the lighter blue. Just so I don't have to keep wiping my blocks too many times. And take your time printing the panel. You don't want to rush this. Obviously, it's the most important part about your about your lampshade as your beautifully printed fabric. So just take your time, make sure you've practiced lots and you're feeling confident with the design that you've gone for. Now, you can see with this panel, I'm just taking my time, ensuring that I'm getting the prints where I want them to go. 
and I haven't gone over the edge of the panel too many times but I do find it really makes me feel less restricted by having this little bit of excess. I don't then have to worry if one of my designs does go over the edge a little bit, it really helps with your printing. And I am nearing the end of my lampshade. Now, uh, something that people always ask me is about matching the design up, because obviously your panel is going to go round and uh, meet at the back. But it's very difficult to try and match it up because there's an overlap at the end. And it's very hard to work out how much it overlaps by. It can kind of change depending on how you make your shade. So I tend to just say to people that at the back, you're not going to notice the join because normally you'd put the back of the fabric and um, you know, if it's against a wall or anything, you wouldn't see the back. So here my join, it doesn't match at all, but I just tell people not to worry about it. Just print it how you want because really what you're gonna see is the middle of it because that's what's gonna be on show the most. And try not to worry about matching up either end. And there you have your finished lampshade panel. So once you've printed it all, allow it to dry until it is completely dry. So I'll probably leave mine for an hour just to be sure. And then we'll come back and make it into our lampshade. So the next stage is once you've printed it and it's totally dry, we're ready to cut the excess fabric from the panel. So you want to make sure you've got a pair of really sharp scissors. Um, I've got a pair of fabric scissors here or if you don't have any fabric scissors you might have a crafting knife and a mat so you can always use that. Make sure your surface underneath you is clean so you're not going to get any smudges or any dirty marks on your printed shade. So what you want to do is down the two shorter sides, these are the parts that are going to overlap. So one of them is going to be seen. So you want to cut these really, really neatly. So cut down both short sides. So this is where your overlap's gonna be. So you can start to see it come together. So I can't quite remember how much the overlap is. I, I never know until, until you start rolling it. But you can see there, it doesn't matter that my pattern isn't continuous. Either way, it still looks very good. So I've cut the excess fabric from both short ends of the lampshade and like I said I cut them very neatly as these will be seen and I've cut the fabric off the bottom and now I've just got to do the top. Now a tip with this is the instructions state you should do the same on the short side and cut the fabric directly up to the panel but I find it doesn't leave you enough fabric to wrap around the wires. So the bit at the top and the bottom on the long length, this is the bit of fabric that goes around the top and then tucks back in. But like I said, I don't feel like it leaves you enough fabric. So when I cut along the long lengths, I leave about one or two millimetres of extra fabric. So normally I measure it with my scissor blade. I just leave an extra little bit and don't cut directly up to the panel. Just leave a tiny bit extra. It's not much, but this just helps. See there, a little bit extra. This just helps um, allow you enough fabric to wrap around the wires because sometimes the fabric can fray. Just leave a scissor width of excess. I'm going to show you this up close so it's really clear. So on my two shorter ends, I have cut really neatly. So with my sharp scissors, I've cut directly right up to the panel so that both ends are really neat as one of these ends will be on show. And on the long length of fabric, you can see here on the panel, we have this strip at the bottom and top. 
and eventually in the next step we'll take this little bit off and this is the bit of fabric that wraps around the top of our wires so you can see round here but what i find is that they tell you to cut directly you know straight up to the panel but i feel that this doesn't leave you enough fabric to wrap around the top and sometimes the fabric frays so what we suggest to do is just leave a little bit of extra just in case you have any accidents or if the fabric frays when we remove this strip it just leaves you a little bit more allowance and then we can always cut this off at a later stage so just bear that in mind when you're cutting along the long length just leave like a millimeter or two of extra fabric you see here it's already starting to fray so i'm glad i leave a little bit of extra and then the next stage i will talk you through so in this first video we've gone through all the steps of cutting sticking and printing your fabric and getting ready to make into the lampshade. Now in the next video, so part two, I'm going to show you how to turn your panel into the lampshade and attach it to the rings. But this is a lot of information to take on. So if you're doing this workshop with us and joining in with this tutorial, we suggest that you get to the same point as us. So complete all of video one. So you have your printed panel like this and then move on to the next video of making your shade.